What is up guys, Tori Drake, Denver Realtor, and today we're going to cover the six worst design studio upgrades you can make at the design studio for return on investment. If you're buying a new construction home, you probably know what a design studio is, so I'll assume you know what a design studio means. And going there can be overwhelming because there's so many things to choose from. It could be, you have, you could upgrade every single square inch of the house, but it doesn't mean you should. So it begs the question, uh, which upgrades are worth it in terms of return on investment and just quality of life and which upgrades are just not worth it that don't get you that return on investment and don't really upgrade a quality of life and aren't worth the money. Now, I made a whole separate video on the five categories that I think are the best return on investment and best return on quality of life that I'll link right there. But this video is all about the six things I don't think most people should spend money on at Design Studio. By the way, if you're new to my channel, my name is Tori Drake. I'm a local Denver realtor. I feel very qualified to make this video because about 60% of the business I do is in the new construction space as a realtor in the greater Denver area. And about 40% is in traditional resale. If you're new to my channel, I do basically, basically my whole channel is dedicated to the new construction space. I have a playlist that I post in weekly for new model home tours to help people shop for homes, new community tours to help them shop communities and learn about new communities being built in Denver. And then a whole bunch of other cool stuff but a uh, new construction uh, process stuff like this video but let's dive in all right so for number one we're coming into the kitchen but don't worry most of the recommendations that I make for the highest the best return on investment are in the kitchen however there's one that I really don't recommend doing and that's upgrading the granite countertop to anything above a level one now I do recommend upgrading the countertops to granite because that's gonna be Number one, look amazing. Number two, you're gonna love it living in it. Number three, if you do sell, buyers are gonna love it. However, <clears throat> when you're upgrading to granite, you'll have the option to choose from a level one granite up to, I think, I believe level five is the highest. And you know, the higher you go, the more expensive it is. You do not, I don't think you really need to pay. I really strongly believe you don't need to upgrade higher than level one because never in my life, and I probably never, ever, ever has a buyer walked into a home where I'm like, <gasps> Is that level three on our top and not level one? No, this doesn't happen. People just see granite, they love it. So definitely upgrade, pay the premium to have the granite, but don't pay for anything above level two, three, four, five, because that's just unnecessary. An unnecessary upgrade number two, we'll stay in the kitchen for this, but really apply it to the entire house, is cabinet hardware. You're gonna pay a pretty big premium to have upgraded or custom uh, cabinetry hardware on you know everything in the house here, but you just don't need to because number one, you're gonna pay premium to use the builder's cabinetry hardware, including doorknobs, literally all the stuff you touch on a house. Uh, number one, you're gonna pay a premium. Number two, you're gonna have limited selection. The, the design studio has, I don't know, they could have three options, they could have 30, but either way, if you just replace them after closing, which is really unbelievably easy to do, number two, number one, it's gonna save you a lot of money. Number two, you can choose from all the cabinetry hardware in the world and find something that you just love while also saving money. The third thing I recommend not spending money on at the design studio is for premium paint because you're going to save a lot of money just buying the paint and hiring painters yourself after closing. So you'll save a lot of money and once again you'll have a lot of more options to choose from than the design studio uh, will have. By the way, here's a fun pro tip for the paint if you do decide to do it yourself and take me up on my advice. That's awesome. Here's a pro tip is don't paint the house until a year after you move in. Here's why. Um, when new, when you buy a new construction home, it's gonna be settling the first year. The house is gonna be finding its happy place, which is totally normal. And what's also totally normal during that time is for the first year for like nails to pop out a little bit. Totally normal, not a big deal. You hammer it back in, you patch it and repaint it. So if you, if you paint your entire house after closing, the whole year, whenever a nail pops out, you're gonna have to you know, hammer back in and then repaint over that spot, which could become a nuisance over the course of an entire year. If you wait a year for that to happen and be done with, then you paint the house, you won't drive yourself crazy uh, doing touch-ups. But that's a minor detail, whether you decide to paint it the day you move in or a year later, it's, it's not too big of a deal, but you will save money doing it on your own and save some sanity doing it a year after you move in. Number four for worst design studio upgrades for return on investment is light fixtures. Definitely pay. I always recommend paying to have the lighting or sorry, the wiring done so you can install light fixtures, but I recommend buying and installing your own because once the wiring is done, it is just crazy easy to install them. Now, the reason I recommend um, just doing the wiring and not upgrading to light fixtures 
is for the reason, same reason as the hardware. Uh, you'll pay a big premium to choose from their light fixtures and, and you'll have limited options as opposed to paying for them to do the wiring. And then you can choose from all the lighting fixtures in the whole wide world to find something that is just perfect for you and you'll likely save a lot of money doing it that way too. Number five is appliances. Uh, if they're offering them included with the price, cool, take them, enjoy. If you need to buy them at Design Studio, I don't recommend doing it because once again, you're gonna pay a premium for those models. What I recommend doing is seeing the models that you, you would want to take, get from the builder, see what those models are, and then literally just going online and seeing if they are the same price online if you bought it yourself, but likely it'll be cheaper if you buy it yourself, so you can just uh, do it that way. Last but not least, number six, we are coming down to the floor for this because it is I don't freak out because I'm really, really torn on this, on if it's a good investment or if it's not a good investment. I actually don't have a definitive answer for you unless it's carpet or tile, which I'll get to in a moment, but if we're talking upgrading the hardwood floors, here are my thoughts that I'd love for you to consider is that flooring is something that you will pay a huge premium on to have the builders do for you. Uh, just know that. And uh, if you're someone like myself who doesn't like his day-to-day -day life disrupted through like by routines disrupted for things like that. For me, that is worth the premium payment to have the builders install the wood floor. But just know that it, you can save lots of money by doing the floors, by hiring a contractor on your own to do the floors. Uh, but just know you, you will save lots of money, but then you also need to just need to do, make sure that you're getting a good contractor. So will you pay a premium having the builders do the flooring, hardwood flooring upgrades for you? Yes, is that worth it? I don't know that answer for you. For me, yes it is. For some, I have a client who's in a contract right now whose dad is a contractor uh, who's gonna do the work for them. So for them, it wasn't worth it. They're not paying for the upgrades, I don't think. I remember they weren't planning to, but anyway, you get the idea of what I'm saying. Just know, decide for yourself if it's something you're willing to live through the headache of having a contractor do because it's gonna be very disruptive. It's gonna take some time. And if you don't hire a good con contractor, it could go a little sideways. But just know that if you go with the builder, you're, you're pretty much guaranteed to have a good install, have a warranty on it, and save the headache of doing it yourself, but it comes with a premium price tag. Now, all that being said, so that's all just food for thought. I don't have a definitive answer. I just wanted to give you the pros and the cons of doing that. That being said, if it's tile, like we're talking like bathroom floor tile, like let's just um, definitely pay to have the tile installed because getting tile removed and ripped up is very expensive, very messy. Um, so if, if it's tile you're talking about, oh, should we upgrade to uh, in the bathroom from wood floor to tile? No, we can do that on our own very different. I actually need to correct something. Uh, I misspoken there and forgive me for looking like a hot mess. It's four in the morning. What I meant to say is if a certain room comes with tile and you don't want the base tile and you want upgrade or just a different tile overall, have the builders do that because it's very expensive to rip tile up. So if a room comes with tile and you don't like the tile, I don't recommend doing it on your own or hiring a contract because that can get very expensive and very complicated. So if it comes with tile and you want different tile, I recommend having the builders do that. Just in my opinion tearing tile up. If you want tile, I recommend having the builders do that. But last but not least for flooring, let's talk about carpeting. Um, if you're gonna do upgraded carpet, I do not recommend getting upgraded carpeting, but instead getting the upgraded carpet padding. Because most people, when they pay for upgraded carpeting, what they want is softer carpet, more plush carpet, which you can accomplish that same thing with carpet padding. And the best thing is, is if you paid for the premium like padded, or pre premium carpet, but not the padding, once that carpet is old, you're gonna have to replace it with another expensive extra padded carpet, as opposed to getting, um, a premium plush carpet padding which goes underneath the carpet and then you can put totally generic carpet on top of that and it's gonna feel amazing plush and like it's more expensive but it's really the carpet padding so moral of the story for flooring just know the pros and cons of having the builders install it versus you doing it on your own. And then for tile, if you want the tile, I definitely recommend having the builders do that for you. And then for carpet, if you're gonna get upgraded carpeting, I definitely, which I do recommend doing, getting better carpet, but instead of just doing the carpet itself, pay for the premium carpet padding and then just get the generic carpet on top of it. Hope that helps and makes sense. Oh guys, I'm gonna get off the floor and that is the six 
the, the six worst design studio upgrades for return on investment. My goodness, that is a long name. Guys, once again, Tory Drake, Denver Realtor. Um, if you have any needs in the new construction space, I would love for you to leverage the relationships I have built through doing as much work as I've done in the new construction space. A huge, huge thank you to Richmond American for letting me film this video in their model home, the Hemingway in the Crystal Valley community. So thank you to the Richmond American team. You guys are awesome and build beautiful homes, as you guys can tell. If you're into home tours, follow me on Instagram and TikTok because I post a home tour of the coolest homes in Denver literally every single day. And of course, on my YouTube channel, I have home tours of dozens of model homes. I post them every week. I highlight new construction communities. So definitely give me a follow if you're into that stuff slash subscribe guys. Thank you so much. And I will see you on the next one.